So today we're going to talk about the three strong signs a man over 40 is ready to commit to you. Now, I know it can be very difficult for those of us in midlife to, to attract love for a variety of different reasons. I think one of the challenges for those of us in midlife is that we're no longer surrounded by single eligible people in our daily lives as we were when we were teenagers or in our 20s, for many of us that went to college and were surrounded by single eligible people. And those early stages of, of in being in the workforce, for those of us in midlife, many of our friends are married, have children, we're just no longer in a daily environment to connect with people on a level. And now we've resorted to our devices for connecting with people through an online medium. And because of this, we're meeting total strangers. We don't know their values. We don't know much about them. We don't know their past experiences. And so it can be rather challenging to determine if someone really is capable of commitment. Now, did you hear me say the word capable of commitment? See, a lot of people want companionship. They want connection. They want physical intimacy. And today we no longer need to, we no longer require commitment to get companionship, connection, and sex. You know, one of my followers once said, Jonathan, women give wife benefits at girlfriend prices, Okay. And, and we no longer require much of a commitment. We barely require monogamy and exclusivity in the early stage of dating. We barely require that to be physical, intimate with someone. You know, it's interesting. I think there's three layers to commitment, three levels, if you will. Level one is that monogamy and exclusivity we just spoke of, okay? I think the second level is teammates with one another. When you begin operating as a team with one another. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail. And lastly, is when you're all in with one another, you're all in. And it requires two people all in for to make a relationship successful. And sadly, oftentimes what we witness in the dating marketplace is one person is all in and the other person is like, well, I'm dipping my toe in the water. I'm dipping my toe. I want that companionship. I want that connection. I want that physical intimacy. But I'm not capable of commitment. You know, some of the signs that um, demonstrate that they're not capable is that they're just not that into you after meeting. They just operate from a flaky perspective. And women beat themselves up. They oftentimes beat themselves up. What did I do wrong? What, what should I have done differently for this person to like and love me? I witness women beat themselves up over and over and over again. Because you, they chose a person, sadly, you chose a person without doing what I re will recommend in a moment. You don't do what I'm about to recommend to determine if they're capable of commitment. Now, I want you to know many of you will bond with a man whose life is in chaos. His life is in chaos because women are natural, are natural healers. They're natural nurturers. You'll, you'll take a guy whose life is in chaos and you feel as though, well, if I nurture him back to health, he'll want me. What was the movie Notebook where um, um, Rachel McAdams is helping, uh, like the, the man she was about to marry, she helped nurse him back to health but she was still in love with someone else. Women are natural. You'll take a man whose life's in chaos and nurture him, hoping that by the time he's, he's healed, he'll want you to be in a relationship with him. And it just doesn't work that way. And then there's the men who are deeply wounded from their childhood. They're deeply have, they have childhood wounds or adult traumas. I just witnessed a significant percentage of men and women who are who are still grieving maybe they're grieving their marriage but they're unaware of it maybe they're grieving their last significant relationship because it was very treasured to them and they didn't go through the stages of grief i shared in a video yesterday how i bypassed i bypassed the anger stage of grief to take the high road 
to show, you know, to be in a state of gratitude, to, to recognize that it was a benefit and a blessing to me. But if we don't go through the stages of grief after a treasured relationship ends, if you were deeply attached to a person, and if men haven't done this as well, it makes it very difficult for them to fully commit to you in a significant relationship. So one of the things I talk about in my private coaching is learning how to vet another person. Dating is a vetting process. That's the process. Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit back in my feminine energy and met, let, let men lead. They're supposed to entertain me. They're supposed to romance me. They're supposed to climb to the highest room of the tallest tower. Even the book, The Rules, sets men up as having to do extraordinary things to prove their worth. But that doesn't prove anything. Human beings who are hurting on the inside can be temporarily attracted to those heroic efforts and they might temporarily get attached from, a, from an attraction-based or a love attachment base or a trauma base. See, when I said dating is a vetting process, it's about really understanding this person's past experiences. It's like, okay, I want you to think about when you're interviewing someone for a job and you have their job resume and you see that they worked at Burger King, you know, when they were growing up and they worked at a newspaper at some point and then they got their master's degree in psychology and then they worked as a, you know, a marketing specialist at this company. There's a reason why there's a reason why all those experiences ended and if you don't get a, an understanding of what happened on a deeply emotional level it's going to be difficult to determine if this person is ready for a significant commitment. By the way my coffee mug says don't make me go all psycho roommate on you. <laughs> Midlife dating is so different than those in their 20s and 30s. And let me explain why. In midlife, in, in their 20s and 30s, most men and women are on the hunt to make babies and raise a family. They have this common shared experience that they're building together. See, for those of us in midlife, we already come to the table with our luggage. And in many cases, we can't see how that luggage will line with one another. If you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg chart, Excuse the glare. Relationship iceberg. Can you see above the waterline is chemistry? We've been indoctrinated to believe chemistry equals relationship success, but shared values, shared vision, blendable lifestyles, emotional maturity is where compatibility really sinks in. And so when I say, you know, interviewing a person much like that job dynamic is really getting a sense of where are they in what they desire? What are they capable of? This requires vetting skills. Again, if you need some support with that, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. I get calls each week from clients, Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. Jonathan, I met a great guy. And they know the difference because they made an investment into treating this process differently. And now they can pay attention to those three strong signs that men show. Sometimes it's, it's, it's rare to experience these th three strong signs because of our current dating environment, our current environment of, of swiping. You know what's interesting? I, I want to say this, and I'll get into those three signs in a moment. I believe, like, so I'm single and I'm out in the dating marketplace, and it, it fascinates me because... Maybe I have a little bit of an ego, but I think I'm pretty decent looking for my age. I'm in pretty good shape for my age. I'm blessed. Uh, I, I, I have a full head of hair at my age. And I, I don't, by the way, folks, I don't color my hair. And I can't begin to tell you how many flaky women I experience in the dating marketplace because I think many of you have a false sense of, of choice. And you bypass a lot of good men who are going to treat you in the way I'm going to share with you. 
I think it's partly because there's still wounded women out there as there are equally wounded men out there that are still haven't learned to really identify those people who are capable of a significant commitment. Now, one strong sign, you know, and these are for men over 40 ready to commit to you, he makes you a priority. He makes you a priority. First strong sign. Now, it doesn't mean he puts you up on a pedestal, but he, 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 his life isn't in so much chaos. He's not, you know, um, he's not hung up on a past relationship. He's not, he's grieved his past relationships. His, he's no longer in a contentious relationship with the next spouse. And because of that, he can make you a priority in his life. And more importantly, he genuinely wants a life partner. He makes you a priority and he genuinely wants a life partner. I call these men the grower builders. Now, a lot of you women go, where are the grower builders? I'll be honest with you. You swipe past them all the time. You swipe, you swipe left on a lot of the men or the grower builders. And then what you're faced with are those user and spenders I talk about. And then you're like, where are the grower builders? You bypass a lot of good men. They make you a priority. These men want a life partner. And I'll show you how to determine that if you want to coach with me. You know, I, I think, you know, most men don't like talking on the phone. Once, once we've had physical intimacy with you, we don't like talking on the phone. Men who are grower builders, life partner men, they want to spend regular time with you. But if you do live a fair amount of distance with one another, he makes you enough of a priority, even over the telephone, to, to keep the flames of the relationship going. If he's a genuine person that seeks a life partner, he's what I call a grower builder. He makes you a priority and he'll make those phone calls in addition as well. Number three, he actively tries to help you in his life. He actively tries. Now, this can be a little bit confusing because, you know, men who are emotionally constipated and emotionally wounded and emotionally hurt can also have acts of service. But in other words, he wants to help you in his life. But I'm going to share with you how you differentiate between those people. But they genuinely want to help you in their life. There are significant men who are users who won't want to help you in your life. In other words, they remember I said the second level of commitment is teamwork. That's how he operates in that teamwork perspective. He operates from that teamwork perspective. He actively wants to help you and his wife. He, by the way, men love it when you ask them for their advice. Uh, folks, someone write this down. Write this in the chat box. We'll use my name, Jonathan. Can I get your help with someone? Jonathan, can I get your advice on something? Folks, men who are grower builders, men who want life partners, they flourish in that space of wanting to help you. They actively try to help you in your life. So when you make requests, just by the way, getting advice is one way to demonstrate that you respect this person you're with. So I encourage you to start integrating this in your conversation. And for those of you thinking, well, Jonathan, this is all about what I'm supposed to do for a man. I just want to be clear. Men should be doing everything equal. You know, this should this goes both ways. You should want to make him a priority. You should actively try to help him in his life so you both are mutually doing this together, okay? Now, I'm going to share a bonus one after the third strong sign, but the third strong sign is he integrates you into his life. He wants to be with you in his life. Remember I said that level two of commitment is that teamwork? Well, he actively tries to help you and then he actively inter you integrate into each other's lives as a team with one another. You're helping each other on a personal and a professional level to be the best for one another. You, By the way, to be of service to one another, that demonstrates teamwork to be of service to one another. Because when you operate to be in service to one another, it's leaning into that third level of commitment. And that's all in. And how do we recognize that someone is all in? They openly express their feelings about you. 
to you. They openly express their feelings about you to you. Now, I think this is rather confusing, so let's unpack this for a moment, okay? When men are on the hunt, and I know you've heard this, men love the hunt and men love the chase, and I should just sit in my feminine energy and let them chase me because that's what men are supposed to do. And they prove their worth by climbing to the highest room of the tallest tower. <laughs> you know, many of you have been so indoctrinated in the Cinderella coach, you know, the Cinderella coaching model. And I mean, I, I, I observe this with women who give advice to women. You guys are being sold the Prince Charming narrative. Okay. It's a fantasy. That's why they're called fantasies. They don't work. They're, they're daydreams. Okay. Human beings are riddled with wounds and traumas and, and, and they're, they're, Human beings are flawed. <laughs> I mean, they have, and, and I don't mean that from a disparaging way. We just have insecurities, weaknesses, fears that cause us not to be perfect. It's just, that's the reality of life. So, you know, oftentimes this, this narrative sets you up for failure. Expressing how he when a man is chasing you for physical intimacy, he will give you a barrage of how he feels about you. Okay, how he feels about, how, let me, I, I made a mistake. How it feels to him, how he feels about how you make him feel, okay? There's a big difference versus when he expresses how you make him feel versus how he feels about you, how he feels about you. I'm grateful that you're in my life. I so appreciate the kindness that you care. I so am, am I'm in, in, in gratitude over the compassion you are. You are a compassionate, you're a loving being, and I'm so grateful for that. He's expressing how he feels about you, not how you make him feel. This is the tricky part of all of this. And many of you confuse this as when he expresses how you make him feel as if that's a strong sign of commitment. No, because many of you come to me time and time again, Jonathan, I just don't know how he feels about me. If you have to question how he feels about you, that's not a good sign that he wants to be in a committed relationship. If he tells you how he feels being with you, that's just, that's validating his, like you're, you're just giving to him. And he appreciates the, not even appreciates, he just welcomes the giving. But one of the fundamentals of building a strong partnership with someone is expressing how important they are to you in his life. And I think that's where a lot of men struggle. And it's a strong sign when he expresses how, not how you make him feel, but how he genuinely feels about you. And not just saying, and by the way, a lot of men dismiss it. Well, I just show up, don't I? I'm just, I do all the things you ask me to do. Isn't that enough? Folks, if a man uses rhetoric, I, I give you too much. I give you so much. I can never satisfy you. That's a man who doesn't genuinely understand your feelings and the importance of building the deep roots of trust that I talked about earlier that sustain that all in that third level of commitment of all in. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this conversation. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get the books I recommend and my dating vows and join my mailing list is listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Merrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.